Hmm. I might have a little problem with this gizmo. Hmm. Good morning, everybody. It's Stephen here for Bland Designs and the Idiot Quilter, and welcome to my weekly vlog for Monday, January the 9th, 2023, vlog number 298. And just as another statistic, after all the years that I have been doing this, I have finally gone over 1 million viewers. Now, that sounds impressive, but you have to realize I've been doing this since about 2012. <laughs> So in the big scheme of things, that's not a lot. And that's views, okay, not subscribers. Although I just went over 8,000 subscribers as well on my channel, which to me, that's a lot. I know little fish in a big pond. But anyways, it makes me happy. Okay, so let's move on to what I have been up to this week. Well, this is not finished yet, but I still have borders to put on this and there's three borders of various sizes and then it has to be quilted of course and all that kind of good stuff um but i'm really happy with the way this is turning out this pattern i think is a cozy quilt pattern and it is called uh stars of wonder and um it's just a twin size uh quilt but i really like it i think it's turned out pretty good and eh, there's a couple little spots that are a little worrisome for me um but you know Man on a galloping horse, blah, blah, blah. We'll never see them. So that's one thing that I have managed to accomplish this week. I'm actually working on several projects at once. And that's it. That's all I have to show you when it comes to that. This could be a quick episode. And you're going, yay. Okay, so that takes me to YouTube channel of the week. And um, some time ago, quite a long time ago, like several years ago, I reviewed this particular YouTube channel called Threadbanger, quite the name, and it has nothing to do with thread. It used to have to do with, well, actually an eclectic collection of things like DIY projects, art projects, travel, things like that. It was all very interesting. And then the content creator of this, and I can't remember his name, had a heart attack and not an old person. He was a young guy. Uh, he had a very serious heart attack. Well, our heart, heart attacks are always serious, right? Um, that put him in the hospital, um, and it was touch and go for a while, according to his story, um, whether he was going to make it or not. Well, uh, happy to say that he did make it, um, and he's back on YouTube, and he's making, he's doing art, and he's experimenting with the world of poured paint um, and that kind of thing. And I used to do paint pouring, as you may know way back when, uh, before I got really majorly into quilting, I was doing all kinds of arty things. Um, paint pouring uh, was a big craze for a while. It probably still is, um, but very interesting. But he had found a new technique for paint pouring, which almost makes me want to go back and do some more. And here's what I'm talking about. This week's YouTube of the week comes from one that I reviewed a long time ago called Threadbanger. And back when I first uh, did a review of this particular YouTube channel, it um, it had a variety of different things. Uh, there was creative elements, there was DIYs, there was all kinds of stuff on it. But lately, as I've revisited Threadbanger, he has been concentrating on doing some paint pouring. And he's showing some very interesting paint pouring techniques and that's what i'm focusing on today in this review especially the latest ones which are called dustpan painting and these are really interesting to uh, watch um and very creative it makes me want to dig out some of my old craft supplies and give this another try again because i used to do paint pouring and it was a lot of fun but this is a new technique that i had never seen before that uh i think could be a lot of fun with some really interesting results. So if you're in to doing any kind of paint pouring or anything that's creative uh, in terms of using paint, then you might want to check out this particular section of the thread banger. You know, I could sit there for days and just watch the whole process of that because it's fascinating and mesmerizing as well. 
Okay, so you'll find a link to Threadbanger in the show notes. You will also find a link for Stephen and Walter Live. Uh, we kind of rambled on uh, in the second half of the show yesterday, um, talking about you know basically the stupid things people say and well say online what they say to content creators on here because they think that they you know are at liberty to insult them um how people are treating retail staff and everything like that and things that came out of the pandemic that haven't gone away yet um you know just rude behavior and things like that so we had quite a discussion about all of that so if you're into that kind of thing you might want to check it out um, there is a link to Idiot Quilter episode 199, where, uh, well, we talk about what we always talk about, uh, or I talked about on the Idiot Quilter, um, you know, all things quilting. Uh, we have So Chatty, and uh, this week we looked at trends, or what we found in Google that says the trends will be in the quilting and sewing world uh, for 2023. So if you're interested in that, you might check it out. Basically, I take it all with a grain of salt, you know. Um, who are those people who come up with these trends? Like, who are they? You know, um, my mother had an expression used to be, well, everybody says so. <laughs> so this is one of those kind of things. I guess everybody, whoever they are, say so. So you might want to check that out as well. Okay, let's take a look at what the weather is doing. Now, it is 7.25 in the morning, so it is still dark here. But you can see from my ring camera that we basically don't have any snow. Little tiny patch sitting right there off my walkway. Um, the days have been gray, dampish. Um, we've had some rain, no snow. Uh, not in my area. Other parts of Canada get snow. Um, I have mixed feelings about not having snow right now. Uh, I make the joke all the time that, you know, I, I'd be happy if I never saw it. But, you know, we do need the snow because the snow is a form of precipitation. And um, I don't know. It's just, I mean, I'll curse it when it comes because it will come. It will come. And might as well prepare ourselves, although it's not in the forecast right now, but we're going to get a major dump one day. And I just hope the dump doesn't come in late April. And you'll know why in a moment when I, I speak more to that issue. But yeah, it's just dull, gray, lifeless. And I think this is what brings on January blues for a lot of people. Um, you know, the weather does affect us. And when you see a gray day, I don't know about you, but it just makes me feel that color scheme as well. I feel very gray inside, uh, very blue. So anyways, that's what it looks like. Current temperature is minus three degrees Celsius. That is not, yeah, it's cold, but that's, yeah, that's pretty balmy weather really for this time of the year where we live. So yeah, we'll see what happens as time goes by. Okay. So what's pissing me off this week? Well, it's not really a pissed off. It's just the way things are. I had our internet service upgraded at the first of last week. Um, we've wanted to get rid of our landline for quite a while. And some time ago, I contacted Bell, our service provider, Bell Canada, and told them this. Well, because we had all these packages, you know, that's how they do things. They make you think you're getting a deal by packaging things up and they take 20 bucks off a month or something like that. Uh, problem is that they're just getting you to buy a lot of useless things that you really don't need. And one of those useless things was our landline. The only calls we ever got on our landline were scammers constantly. And the first time I approached Bell about getting rid of it, well, they're telling me that, uh, yes, we could get rid of it, but it was in a package, so the package would no longer exist. And my monthly bill for my internet and for my TV, minus the landline, was going to be more money than what I was paying with the landline. Yeah, go figure that. So I took, I kept the landline, but I reduced it to the most basic of telephones. There was no voice calling, no voice blocking anything and reduced it right down and that's what we've had for a while but the scammers of course can still get through and uh, basically we use our cell phones for everything now it took me a while 
to get used to using my cell phone and giving my cell phone number out as my principal number. But now that I've done it, now that I've been doing this for a while, I'm very much used to it. We don't need the landline. So I called up, well, actually, the thing that put me over the edge on this was one night we got a scam call. They usually come around dinner time. Uh, that's when we get them. And this did. And the phone rang and we picked it up and there's nobody on the other end of the line. And so, or it might have been a call, one of those ones, it there might have been, it was a recorded message, something about Amazon, which, you know, somebody had used our account or whatever. It's bogus. It's bogus. I mean, you know me and Amazon. A day without Amazon is a day without sunshine. And I'm constantly on Amazon. Um, I might have an obsession. Who knows? But anyways, I knew this was just a scam. Hung it up. Five minutes later, the phone rings again. Pick it up. Same thing. Hung it up. Five minutes later, the phone rings again. Same thing. Hung it up. Okay. So then it did this every five minutes, pretty much for an hour. Until we finally unplugged the phone. That was the only way to stop it. That was ridiculous. That was ridiculous. And there was nobody on the other end of the line. It was a recorded message. So maybe the scammer's little call, computerized calling system got a glitch in it. I don't know. But either way, that was it. Next day, I contacted Bell. I was prepared for the hard sell. I didn't really get it. They did ask me why I want to get rid of my landline. I said, yeah, I told them what I just told you. And they said, well, you know, we can block those. No, you can't. No, you can not. If you could, you would have. No. In fact, I think years ago, uh, when scam calls were coming through, I think I contacted Bell about that and they assured me that they would block those. It never happened. It never happened. So no, I said, nope. Told them exactly what I wanted. And at the time they were having a sale on upgrading from our existing internet speed to 3.0 gigabyte speed. We had 1.5 gigabytes, which is pretty good, pretty fast. But yeah, Faster is better as far as I'm concerned, especially when you're doing things like YouTube and that. Um, it takes a while to process and get things uploaded to YouTube. So the faster it is, the less time that takes. So the deal was about $10 more than a month than we were paying currently for the 1.5. So I figured, sure, let's go for that. So we got everything there. We got rid of the landline, the whole bit. But then they're telling me somebody had to come like we had to have an installation. And I said, but that's free, isn't it? Because I looked at their packages when they're telling me this stuff. Oh, yes, that's free. So they made arrangements for a few days later after I made that call for someone to come out and do an install. Now, I'm thinking to myself, why do I need an install? I already have what they call a 4.0 or 4,000 hub. Yesterday, I got criticized because I called it a modem. Old term. It's not a modem. Somebody very kindly corrected me and explained what modem meant, which I knew what it meant. But, you know, I'm an old dog. Teach me a new trick. Whatever. So I'm going to use the term hub. Now that's the current word. So there you go. I hope that makes people happy. Anyways, I have a 4000 hub. I looked it up on the Internet and supposedly it, it was kind of ambiguous. I didn't know. Does this handle gigabyte traffic? Because apparently we needed a gigabyte hub. Anyways, fine. They came out. Now, the thing was, I talked to three different people in the process of having all of this done. And it's like the left hand doesn't talk to the right hand, which is typical of Bell. Um, you have to repeat yourself a thousand times. You have to ask a thousand questions to make sure you're getting what you want to get and the whole bet. So this guy came. Actually, he came early because, you know, Bell gives you like all service providers gave you this window of time when the service person is going to show up. And that's usually from 12 noon until eternity. And, uh, well, this guy called me up and said, and, um, on my cell phone and said, Hey, could I come earlier? This was in the morning. I said, sure, of course you can. No problem. So about 15 minutes later, the guy shows up, he comes in and I said, like, I have a 4,000 hub. Do I really need... He says, yeah, it's not a gigabyte hub. And I said, okay, fine. So all that meant was he unplugged some wires, plugged a new one in. It wasn't a big job at all. He was very good. 
he um, I asked him a few questions, which he seemed to have the answers for, which was nice. Um, he went around to all of our television sets and made sure that they rebooted and were connecting properly. Uh, we checked to make sure my computer was connecting as well on my cell phone. And it did. And all was fine. I asked him a couple of other questions I had. Um, and uh, off he went. And everything was fine. Um, funny part was, though, at one point he was running into a problem. I'm not sure what it was. He has a, a cell phone and that cell phone has an apps on it, which help with his uh, checking and his installation process and everything like that. There was some problem. He phoned a supervisor about it. Then he tells me, yeah, the supervisor was telling him, oh, well, you can't do that. That has to be done by a technician. And he said to the supervisor, I am the technician. Oh. So this is what I mean. The left hand doesn't talk the right hand. The, the, the supervisor didn't even realize this guy on the other end of the line was the technician. The supervisor thought the guy he's talking to was a customer. Yeah, okay. Anyways, this guy was pretty good. He got everything up and running. And then I spent the next two hours getting everything in my house connected to the internet to the Wi-Fi because you know and you don't really realize it until you have something like this happen how many of your devices in your home really use your Wi-Fi system and it takes a while for example in this room alone there are a ton of lights and outlets that are all run by Wi-Fi plug adapter things I have three computers in this room I have two iPads I have an old cell phone that I use for making some videos on. I have the cell phone in my pocket, my latest one. I have two printers. They are Wi-Fi printers. Um, I have one of my 3D printers is on Wi-Fi as well. And that's just this room. Then you start going around the house. We have other lights and other spots of the house that depend on the Wi-Fi and all kinds of things. Our ring doorbell system, our ring alarm system, all run from Wi-Fi. I think in total, and then there's Walter's computer <laughs> and his iPad and his cell phone and even my Lucy, my long arm. I think I went in and I looked and it says we have 50 devices on our Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, so that took me a while, but I got everything up and everything is running now the way it should be. But here's my question about this, and this is where I get into sort of the rant part of this or what pisses me off so i am now paying for three gigabytes transfer speed now there is speed test you can do and i use the speed test that is you know bell has and it tells me that at my modem sorry at my hub i am getting slightly over three gigabytes upload and three gigabytes download well that's great that's what i'm paying for yay yay but then when i go to my computer or my cell phone and use this a speed thing it's considerably lower i even went to a third party well maybe it's a third party speed test and it's telling me it's lower now i know that when you've got like the number of devices we have on wi-fi and things are running at the same time that yes it does slow down your speed okay so i get that and that's what bell tells you however i'm wondering is this just smoke and mirrors? How do we know we are actually getting the speed we're supposed to be getting? Because this test is provided by the internet provider, by Bell themselves. How do we know that this is accurate, that this is reliable? I watch how long it takes for one of my videos to be uploaded to YouTube. And I remember when I first got the 1.5 gigabyte an hour long video took about eight minutes it's taking longer than that with it well actually over time with the 1.5 gigabytes it seemed to take longer and longer now we are on optical fiber but i don't know maybe there's a lot of people on optical fiber right now in our neighborhood maybe that slows it down there are a lot of factors and i realize that for slowing it down but you have to question are you getting what you paid for and the other thing that really ticks me off about it is 
I can't, I will never know. There is no way that I know of that I can figure that out. So if somebody out there is a computer technician and knows about these things, maybe you know of something where, you know, an independent way that I can really figure out what the real speed is of my connection. Mind you, even if it was a little less than that and I complained to Bell, uh, they would give me all kinds of excuses. I do believe that Bell throttles uh, download speeds. Like if I'm downloading large files, i.e. movies or something like that, um, I watch the speed. It's pretty good, but they do throttle it. I'm pretty, they tell you they don't, but they do. They do. Um, now that might have to do not so much that they're trying to cheat you out of things, but just the way the system works. You know, it could be that. I don't know. That's the problem. We are at their whim. We don't really know. But in the meantime, we pay them the big bucks for it. Now, the last thing about all of this. Okay, so everything's up. It's running. I'm happy with it. Now we'll wait for the billing. Because I, I suspect that what I know I should be paying is going to be different than what comes through. Because they will have screwed up. I'm waiting. Installation is about $200. But it said it was free with this. So, and I asked. I, I asked. I asked two people on that and I got the same amount. Oh no, the installation is free. So we'll see. So if I see uh, an installation charge on my next bill or whatever for this, I'll be contacting Bell again and Greasy Wheel gets the oil. So we'll see. But it just makes you feel very vulnerable when you don't know these things, when you get different answers from different people along the line. And you know, we talked yesterday in Stephen and Walter Live about people being rude to service people. Well, I can understand why they are because you're driven to it. You're driven to it by the way these companies deal with you, you know, really. But let's not buy trouble until it happens, okay? Maybe this will all work out okay and I'll be pleasantly surprised. But, you know, um, what's the saying? Prepare for the worst. Expect I don't know, there's something about expecting the worst and preparing for it or something like that. But you know what I mean. Okay, so let's talk about something else, like the Grow Light project. Well, um, I think I have a picture here to show you. Just give me a second. Nope, no picture, because um, there's nothing much to show you. We've done some more harvesting. I made a salad last night using... Um, a mixture of our lettuce that we're growing and some of our herbs and things like that. They just taste better. They really do. They taste so much fresher than buying that crap in the grocery store. Problem is, we haven't grown that much of it, so we want to grow more of it. So, guess what I did? Yes, I bought another grow light system. Same as the one we've got. Um, Walter has to put it together yet. And uh, I also bought some dwarf tomato seeds it's an experiment we're going to plant more lettuce uh we're going to plant these tomato seeds they're supposed to be a little bush there's there's it says on them i bought them from amazon of course i did that um basically you can grow them in pots indoors um they're little cherry tomatoes which is fine and they're only supposed to grow up to about 18 inches high uh, tall or something like that and basically our grow lights can handle up to 18 inches so we'll see i don't know if this is going to work i'm hoping it does it would be great if it does uh, because my idea is then we get them started and they're coming up nice and when the nice weather comes in that we can transplant them maybe outdoors i don't know this is all new to me we're learning as we go also want to get started on our pepper plants now I don't know if you can grow pepper plants under lights indoor, at least in the system that we have. Um, you know, someone mentioned yesterday hydroponics. Well, sure, hydroponics would be great, except you need space for that. And we don't have the space. As Walter says, well, if we didn't have Lucy, we'd have lots of space. <laughs> I said, if it comes between a salad and my Lucy, well, I'll go without the salad. <laughs> you know, um, he's just joking anyways. That thing's not moving anytime soon. <laughs> no way. But we're going to try that as well. So we'll see what happens. Um, the one thing I do like about the grow lights right now is 
you have li you have living green plants and it looks great right now it's looking a little ratty because i need to do a little trimming back I need to harvest some of my herbs and i think we're going to just basically put the herbs in uh, a plastic container or something plastic bag ziploc and freeze them and use them for cooking right because you know after you thaw out something like that it's kind of mushy um but yeah we'll put them in little bags and when we need uh basil in something or oregano or what else have we got out there we got tarragon i don't know why we have tarragon <laughs> um because i never use tarragon but we have tarragon and we also have uh parsley now i use some of the parsley in the salad last night and you know something I'm not a fan of parsley. Well, I don't hate parsley, but parsley is one of those kind of things, you know, you just push to the side and keep right on eating <laughs> on your plate. But I threw some of it in the salad and I think it's supposed to be good for you. So I don't know. And, and one of the other things about all of this, there are no chemicals in what we're growing. We do not add any kind of fertilizer to them or spray them or anything like that. So I guess we're being organic as well. So anyways, we're enjoying this we're learning things um and the experiment continues and i'll keep you up to date with how things go when we get the next system up and running as well okay and speaking of systems and problems the 3d printers okay i have a major problem with one of the printers actually it's my newest printer i think and it's the one that's always given me the least number of problems but um i think it has to do with what they call the x-axis belt which is which moves the head the part that the filament comes out of back and forth back and forth well it makes weird noises i took it apart i took a look at it and my conclusion is i think it's the belt itself i think there's a part of the belt that may be worn down um i haven't been able to examine it that closely but what i did was i went on to amazon and i purchased a couple of new belts that's these right now they're not that expensive one's for the x-axis one's for the y-axis and i really hope they mark them which one is for which but anyways so later today i'm going to install the new belt and i hope that solves my problem if that doesn't solve my problem i'm really not sure what it is it might be the um stepper motor i don't know and if it's that well then i have to make a decision you can buy a new stepper motor i'm not sure how much they cost and i don't think they're that expensive but it's the installing of it because that now might be the tricky part and if that's the case pending how much it costs and all that kind of stuff and what i can find on the internet about uh replacing one of those if that is indeed my problem um i might just scrap this one and buy a new one to replace it i don't know they're about $400 now, more than I paid for them originally. But like everything else in the world, you know, these became popular, uh, the particular brand. And that, that's the other thing too. Would I replace it with exactly the same model or would I go up a model or something like that? I don't know. So, and I have a problem with one of the other printers. It's the one that I basically was given uh way back and it's an older version of these particular corellities that i have it's an original corellity ender um whereas my other two are version twos um i have a problem with it and i have yet to figure out exactly why it's doing what it's doing but it's like there is one one line of filament that it is weaker than all the other lines it's not i don't think it's 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 laying that one level down properly and so then you have a weak thing in a weak spot in the middle of whatever you're printing so i don't know I, i've looked at youtube videos about this i get different ideas i've tried it i don't know so something else that i may need to explore further but right now my major issue is to get this other printer up and running uh and i'm hoping the belt thing does it so I'll let you know how that works out if you're interested that's for you tech geeks out there okay now for those of you that are travel minded here's another blast from the past in trips this is still australia from 2018 and this is when we went to canberra 
which is the capital of Australia. Um, and we did this on March the 5th, 2018. And this is part one of that part of our trip. It's coming up right now. I think that's very special. We made it. So this is Canberra. And it is the capital of Australia. So this is the War Memorial in Canberra. We're going to have a tour of it in a few minutes inside. And looking straight across from it, this leads to their parliament buildings. This is a planned city. It's all been laid out, made for this. It's a separate district unto itself. What we have here I just that's the world war, right? And we start here and we clearly have those who are in the Navy, corrected any people who keep me dying. I pledge to pay for their lives with me. His Majesty's Australia service as King George at the time. So his, his service, George, we did say his Majesty's Australia ship. He's in England and his Majesty's ship of the he had his HMAS first, which sunk off the coast of Java. And there are some 150, 160 names listed there died on when that ship went down. But it's the HMAS Sydney. There were 250 odd people went down when that ship was sunk in a, in a fight with the German cruiser off the coast of Western Australia. This boat here.
so this is the terrain they were basing as they landed. Mine mark this rocky face here. Flooding. I think head to the top eventually. Bay losses. Two fish to be bleeding off something like that. Yeah. Uh, so we this is all the hand to hand fighting at those stages. Yeah. Here, uh, there's an island called the Black. Three of the boys. That's the story. The Japanese landing. That's that is that is good. Japanese satellites. Now he's got two trailers. Carry a couple of torpedoes just enough to do damage. And it was just that one night, the end of May 42. There were three of these in the harbour. I'm not being put in the Another harbour. Another wreck. So that takes me to events in the past week. I've already talked about the upgrade to the internet system. Uh, we did go to an in-person sew day at the club. This is with Walter's uh, sewing class, although there were only three of us there. Um, later on, uh, one of the ladies, so it was kind of a men's, a men's sew day. Uh, there was three of us and another guy came, another couple of guys came, uh, but one of them was not sewing, one of them was. And uh, then one of the ladies from his class did show up later on. Um, not a lot of us, but you get a lot done. And uh, basically, I'm working on a new project that I, I took with me then, but I didn't show you that. Actually, you can see it peeking over my shoulder in the back on my design wall. Uh, these are Lemoyne stars. Um, but I'm going to talk more about those on the Idiot Quilter tomorrow. So, yeah, it's just a day out, you know, a different environment, which is kind of nice because there are many, many days that go by when I don't see the light of day. I don't go out. I'm down here in my sewing room doing my thing. Um, so, yeah, it was kind of nice to get out. Um, we did have craft and chat last week, and that was fun. We had, uh, I think we had a record number of people at craft and chat. Um, it goes up all the time, and that's nice. And I think everybody had a really good time, um, but they were enablers, okay? And what I mean by enablers is let me show you what I ended up buying. Thread. 30 spools of thread. This is glide thread. This is the thread that I use on my long arm for quilting. Um, I love it. It's a great thread, uh, that kind of thing. But somebody put me onto a site that was having a sale where you could pick out 30 colors of thread for, and it came in this box, which is very nice because actually I've bought one of these boxes before and they usually cost me around 30 bucks for just the box itself. Um, for 160 Canadian dollars. That's pretty good price. It isn't a, a, an absolutely fabulous price, but to be able to get, they had all the colors. In fact, what you did was you downloaded a order sheet that had all the colors listed. You checked off the 30 that you wanted and uh, sent it back to them, scanned it, sent it back to them as an email, and away you go. And they were fast. 
Uh, it's called Three Dogs Quilting. They're in the Ottawa area, Ottawa, Ontario area. And um, I don't know if the sale's still on, but it came like really fast. I ordered them last Wednesday. I got them Friday, I think. Yeah, Friday. So that's fast, really fast. So I'm very pleased with this purchase. Um, and, uh, my thread racks look wonderful out in, uh, the Lucy room because I've had them all laid out in rainbow color on, I had, of course, then I had to buy more thread stands, uh, that I mount on the wall to hold all of these, you know, one thing leads to another, but, um, it looks very pretty, <laughs> very pretty out there. So, um, that was something that uh, happened during craft and chat you know it always ends up costing me some money at craft and chat because somebody always says hey have you seen this and i go no i want that <laughs> they're enablers but they're a great group uh love them to pieces they are my friends okay and you can be my friend too <laughs> do you want to be my friend come in my neighborhood be my friend i'm not mr rogers um but yeah so the next one is on February the 1st. The first Wednesday of the month is when I have them. And the next Craft and Chat comes on the very first day of February because that's how it falls. So, you know, all are welcome. And you don't have to be quilting or sewing. And you've heard me say this many times before. This is open to anybody that would just like to have a little day where, you know, you can be social with other people. You can work on whatever you want to work on and, you know, forget about the troubles of the world for three or four hours. So. All are welcome. I guess that means I need to have a pop-up so day very soon. Um, yeah, have to think about that. Okay, so that was it last week. What's coming up? We have booked Vancouver. Yes, we are going to BC in April, mid-April. We're going for about 13 days. I said the Walter 13 days. Are we superstitious about that? Anyways. Walter's got her flights booked already for that. Um, he has got uh, hotels booked for when we're in Vancouver. And then when we, the, our last day out at the airport, we'll, we've got a hotel out there. Um, so we'll be right at the airport when it comes time to, you know, pick up our flight. And now he's working our, out our itinerary for where we're going to go. We're going to go to Victoria, of course, which is on Vancouver Island. You have to take a ferry to get there. Um, and I think if I'm right, uh, if I remember correctly, cause it's been, we haven't been out there since 1993, 30 years ago. It's hard to believe it was 30 years ago when we went the last time. So there probably to Nanaimo, which is out on Vancouver Island as well. Up, uh, we are definitely going to Abbotsford. Abbotsford is about an hour, I think, south of Vancouver, uh, that's where my brother lives. So um, I haven't informed my brother that we're coming out there yet. I don't want to give him a lot of time to escape and avoid me. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. In an ideal world, I'm hoping that I, you know, see my brother and have a nice time visiting with him and his wife. And also I'm hoping to see my oldest niece, his oldest daughter, who lives there as well with her husband. I have never met her husband. Um, and his youngest son. I think still lives at home. And when you say youngest, he's probably about 21 now. And I have not seen him since he was probably about seven years old. He doesn't even know who we are, uh, Walter and I. Uh, the other son is in England, so we're not going to see him. would love to, but yeah, that's another trip for another time. But anyways, it would be nice to reconnect with my brother and his family and everything like that. So that's what I'm hoping comes out of that trip. Um, in fact, I'm thinking of making them something to take out there. Um, I would love to take them a quilt, although I don't know if they're quilt people. Uh, the problem is, though, it's getting it there. Uh, quilts are big. You'd have to have it actually a separate suitcase to put a couple of quilts in, and that costs on the flight as well. Um, I suppose it's doable in the sense that, you know, I could probably get them into one suitcase and pay for the one suitcase and then I'd have an extra suitcase that I could um bring home filled with fabric because <laughs> I do intend to do some fabric shopping when I'm out in BC as well 
the other thing I have to research. Um, so if anybody out there knows of any, you know, quilt stores that I should go to when I'm in, you know, Vancouver itself or Abbotsford, let me know. I'll do some research on Google and find out what's there too. But yeah. So anyways, getting kind of excited about that because we haven't traveled since before the pandemic and we love to travel. And yes, I'm a little apprehensive about traveling and about flying, especially with what we're hearing these days about, you know, people not getting their luggage. Another reason why I'm not taking a quilt out there because who knows if it'll ever get out there uh, kind of a thing um, with the way the, they're handling luggage. So I'm thinking though of making a couple of table runners and I just downloaded, and I'm going to be talking about this on Idiot Quilter later, uh, a great pattern for an in the hoop table runner. And I love doing in the hoop embroidery designs. So, you know, amongst everything else that I'm doing right now, things are piling up. I might do that uh, too. So we'll see. Anyways, it'll be fun. And then on the heels of that, we're we're going to uh, the East Coast for the Canadian National Quilt Show. And of course, we're going to be traveling around and I don't know how many days we'll be there, but uh, I'll tell you more about that when we get things a little bit more planned. And long distance thought, maybe down the road, maybe this year, maybe. It's a big, big maybe. We might look into going to Australia again. Yeah. So 2023, year of travel. Hopefully, hopefully, you know, again, prepare for the best plan for, or plan for the best, prepare for the worst, something like that, whatever that expression is. Okay. So that's it for me today. Thank you so much. Oh, one other thing, just a little uh, tip here. You may have seen it by the time you see this already. Stephanie of Stephanie Stitches and myself, we're doing a sew along and it starts this coming Wednesday and all the details are now up on my site and on her site, on her YouTube, YouTube, YouTube channel. That's what I meant to say. Hate it when you speak with two tongues. Um, I've had that removed. So yeah, so there is a video up announcing that uh, it went up this morning. Um, so it's there. And yeah, if you're interested, check it out. Should be a lot of fun. Sh possibly even a comedy routine because I'm sure I'm going to screw up things. I'm a little nervous about doing a sew along because I haven't done one before. Stephanie, luckily, uh, she has my back because Stephanie is experienced at it. And that'll be great. And I love Stephanie. I mean, I think her husband probably thinks we're having an affair. We Zoom each other so many times lately about everything that, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's okay. She, he doesn't even have anything to worry about, if you know what I mean. Okay, that's it for me today. I hope you have a great week and we'll see you later. Bye-bye for now.